Everything's about awareness and education, really. Yeah. Uh, but remember, people don't want to because I mean, it's a fair thing. You grow up as a, to be an adult. You'd like to think you've got some value and worth. That's and right. nobody as an adult wants to be told that they they got it wrong. Yeah. Or they they block it. Yeah. Yeah. And that's a shame because you can become so much better if you just open up and let it happen. I mean, a good example. Let's face it. You know this. I'm, I don't know if you might, but if you go and look at us, a male versus female. I, I like working with females because they're more prepared to open up quickly and take on board. Welcome to Playing With Perspective, the suspended animation podcast, where we hear real stories from real people and we tackle all sorts of fun topics in the areas of business, marketing, entrepreneurship, mindset, the arts, and well, life itself. It's amazing what you'll pick up. Thanks for joining us. Welcome back, everyone. Another fantastic episode of Playing With Perspective the Suspended Animation Podcast. I'm your host, Darren Saul. It's episode 225. Wow. And we have a double header today. We've got Marie and Jeff in the house. Hi. <laughs> How are you doing, guys? Good. Good. Uh, it's, Friday. it's Friday. It's Friday. Friday. Mm-hmm. Podcast day. Yeah. Fantastic. Can I get better? I love it. But the topic for today is going to be a really fun one and a very interesting one. Live a healthier, happier, and longer life through intentional feng shui and interior design. Now, I better make sure I pronounce that because I know that you can pronounce feng shui in a million ways. Is that right? That's right. You've said it, you said it correctly, feng shui. Feng shui, not feng shui, feng shui. No, no, no. You got to, don't do that, mate. Don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to give a, the audience a little bit more insight into who Marie and Jeff are. Marie is an intentional feng shui practitioner and interior designer. Jeff is an intentional longevity coach and psychologist. Both are also internationally accredited holistic health and healing nutrition coaches. As the creators of the Genius Profile, they are often seen as genius genies Mm -hmm. because they employ their unique genius profile system to help people discover and embrace who they were born to be, their natal genius, <laughs> versus who they have grown to become, their manifested genius. <laughs> what gets them out of bed each day is helping people master their destiny by employing the longevity formula to experience ongoing success in their personal endeavours, their health, their relationships, and their homework environments, and live a long, healthy, happy life through empowered purpose. I'm looking forward to this. Well done. I'm impressed. Who these people? Who wrote that? <laughs> Who wrote that? My Lord. That's a mouthful. <laughs> but you guys have obviously done a lot of study. You've dedicated a lot of time into a few different disciplines and mastered mm-hmm. quite a few disciplines. And I know that you've been very kind to do my charts as well. Oh. And I was very surprised with my charts, which was, it was a very cool experience and a lot mm-hmm. of fun. Actually, you had the tip of the iceberg, mate, because that's just a starting point from where you move on from there. It's a really a, a journey. Once you get started, you don't stop. Wow. Which we found out ourselves personally. We hadn't mm-hmm. just been, like people say, you've written something, leave it alone. But, but every day grows and changes because every day you learn something new or you find a new way to put it you know, to use. It's a great tell us, tell us a bit about your background, how you landed in this particular modality or speciality and why you love it so much. I was just, uh, took the wrong turn the wrong time, I suppose. <laughs> Your background's in different... Yeah, right? long story cut short. I was working, I'm a psychologist, obviously, but don't hold it against me. It's not my fault. <laughs> but anyway, I was doing different stuff, and we had a chance to get introduced to a profiling system, which is not the one that everyone knows, thank goodness. It's got a different background, some more authentic background. And that got us started, so we started doing this when overseas, travelled and learnt with a couple of big shots and, th- and things like that. Wow. Then we realised that really wasn't enough. And then Marie... Being the person she is, she said, being a designer, I want to do more. And we thought feng shui is an obvious connection to this. We're learning about the I Ching, which is the source of all profiling systems anyway. Feng shui is a part of I Ching. What can we do? So we found the most amazing mentor, the most incredible guy I'd ever meet. But he also introduced us to holistic health and nutrition, the Chinese medicine, Ayurveda, and all sorts of different things. So it's really, it was a journey, what would you say, by accident, yet with a, a clear path. And yes, in COVID, like most people, we had no income, but we spent two years studying. Wow. So it was actually very beneficial, wasn't it? I think that led us to a lot of experience working from home, starting a business from home and having the right environment 
for, for each of us, we had separate offices and then I got too busy and Jeff said, I want your big office. So we swapped offices, but I had to change everything around to suit the energy of each of us. Mm-hmm. And also being with each other 24-7, we really knew each other. We knew our strengths and weaknesses. Mm-hmm. I have a lot of strength. I don't have any weaknesses. I had to put Jeff in his place. But I think having that background, I've always wanted a nice family. I'd love staying at home and I love having that family environment so you can just be comfortable. And I've always been healthy. I've always played sport. And then when COVID came and I had a lot of, I did competition ballroom dancing, so I needed to be fit. COVID came stress it. I was in a government working for 20 years and things happened. I got really super, super sick. Mm. Doctors couldn't do anything for me in that way that I don't like taking chemicals and things. So I think when the feng shui, when I started studying, I got so entrenched in it. And with my interior designer background, I saw that there was a need to actually combine the East and the West together. And it made a big difference to us personally. And then I would, I, the more intuitive I became, the more I could read other people. And I was interested in getting them involved in that as well and helping them work out who they were born to be. And it just kept on going and going and going from there. And then with the when we studied through the Academy of Healing Nutrition in London, that just brought the third piece into our business it was the health the physical health and then Jeff being a psychologist with the mental and emotional health and I did all the environmental health so we had these three treasures that we all put together so that everyone could live a healthier life and longer see so I, I don't talk a lot no. <laughs> that's why I brought her along because she always puts it better than me <laughs> and, but the interesting thing is you don't normally think of health and longevity and lifestyle in that respect when it comes to feng shui or interior design. That's more superficial. But you guys have gone way further and you've brought in, is that what intentional longevity is? Yeah, uh, the bottom line was got more than just in the feng shui, but the bottom line to it is uh, the, the reason that a lot of feng shui sometimes seem as superficial or people actually, I've had people actually say it, but, which I think is just incredibly uh, naive when you get to learn more about it, but the bottom line is a lot of feng shui people in Australia and overseas revert to a very basic form, and I, it's like decorating. What colour do I need? Well, I'll put this in this corner, that there, and it'll, my, my house will change. Yep. Which, of course, is, is, is basically rubbish. Because intentional feng shui, which refers back to the original source of feng shui, it's about the people in those places. It's about the energy in those spaces. Mm-hmm. It's about the place, the time, and the space. Mm-hmm. So the home itself, if you like, is the byproduct. The home is... Instead of we feng shuiing a home, we're feng shuiing the environment to suit the person or persons living in the home. So it's the inverse of what you normally do. It's the inverse, yeah. And so we're going into more depth afterwards, but but the point is when, that's what Marie's saying about the treasures, when you've done that for the home, it then supports their endeavours in their relationships. It helps them be more healthy in their mindset. It helps them go to work and come home feeling more, more relaxed. Yep. So there is definitely a connection between them. There's no doubt. Yeah, I love that. So instead of saying, all right, Whatever you want to achieve, let's just make your house and your environment a little bit more conducive to that. So, no, let's first work out who you are. Yeah. Mm, first. And then we'll find a way to build the right environment to allow you to manifest what who you are and what you're meant to achieve. And then that's how we get into your natal versus your exactly. manifested genius. That, yeah. That's right. That's and see, right. here's the thing, and probably I'll speak a term, but I'll say this anyway because I like getting people uh, you know, looking at me, but... <laughs> You said you when you said that we you know manifest what you want. That of course comes back to this agile myth called the law of attraction. Mm-hmm. But I'm going to get in trouble saying this, but I'm going to say it anyway. <laughs> it doesn't matter. <laughs> um, people think. I mean, in a basic form, people think the law of attraction is I'll tell the universe what I want. I'll ask the universe what I want, and the universe will give it to me. Mm-hmm. Of course, that's not exactly true, is it? Mm-hmm. We all know that's not true. Right. In reality, the whole concept of the energy and the home and the environment, and this is this is this is quantum physics talking, not just us. Yeah. Energy is real. Energy has uh, its own movement, its own connection point. Yep. So the point is, each of us has our own energy, and you had a bit of a taste of that. Yep. We have a good energy. So what we're saying is the intention is to match my energy 
with the energy at the time around me. Gotcha. So by doing that, I'm now in sync with that, which means I'm now more able to do things I need to do. That's right. You're, bring, you're bringing harmony to your environment yeah. rather than being disjointed with your environment because then you can't do things, you can't achieve things if you're not in harmony. Mm. Correct. But also, let's face it, I mean, the Western world's caught up with this concept of who does it for me, you know, what I call deferred responsibility. Mm. You fix it for me. You do this for me. I'll have this done by you. We're saying the same thing. Law of attraction is the same thing. But no, you take responsibility. You understand your energy. You understand the environment that you're fitting into. You create what you wish to achieve. No one else, just you. Uh, you do because you intend to achieve it, the same thing. I intend to have success and say I'm going to do it and I'm in the right place at the right time to do it. Love it, love it. Can you define intentional longevity? What does that actually mean? That's the extension of that. Here we go. <laughs> intentional longevity is the bigger picture. I'm doing it. I'm supposed no, to do it. No, I told you that's short tonight. <laughs> I thought she was going to do all the talking today. Intentional longevity is my sort of view of the world. And it fluctuates a part of that. But long story cut short, you know that there was a genius profile. You've had a, a small taste of that. Yep. In other words, in a big picture cut short, we have a genius we're born with. But the world's having an impact on us all the time. There's influences, activities and uh, influences, etc., going on. Right. So we can't just, just happily live to a rough old age. This doesn't always happen that way. Because most people are living not through intent, but by accident. Wow. They're living by accident, meaning what happens to them is what happens to them. Yep. Uh, what's that old thing? Oh, that's, that's life, isn't it? Yeah. And then, but when you turn it around, see, you could live to 50 and have the most amazing life you could ever hope to imagine, everything you ever wanted, not, not money, but relationships, activities, yeah. adventures. Or you could live to 90 or 100 and spend 30, 40 of those years being miserable yep. for different reasons. So it's not about living a long life. It's about living a good life, healthy in seven different areas. Wow, okay. You know, there are actually seven factors. I won't go into them now, but there are seven factors that you have to address if you want to have longevity in life. Now, there was recently a show I was advertising on TV. I, don't, I can't even say the names. So I can't pretend I don't know. Is that the Blue Zones? No, Blue Zones is different. Oh, because the Blue Zones was really good too. Yeah, that's brilliant. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm a big fan of Blue Zone. That's part of what we use. Right. But there's a show, I forget the name, but she had this four-part series about Longevity, and there's a guy on there who is well known in circles. He's a eccentric millionaire. He's got the money, and he's buying different chemicals to keep himself healthy alive. He thinks. Oh wow! Oh my god! But that's not. But living a long life just that's not. It's good if you don't look after the relationships you're in, yep. your mental and emotional strength and health, the home you're about, the activities you're doing, your lifestyle. Yep. Then longevity has to embrace all of those. Otherwise, you're living. Oh, I've got a good diet. Yep. <laughs> well, I've got a good. I've got a good partner, but everything else sucks. So longevity is bigger and more so than being healthy, food, or even wellness. It's that concept of all those aspects. There are seven of them, like I say, in life that you need to address. And it's not just Blue Zone, which is part of it. That's part of what we call the traditional philosophies, which there are many cultures that we draw from and what we work with people on. But it's also using emerging technologies that are coming out. Yeah. Right now, there, for example, there's work being done. It's biological like age management, and they're different, like, for example, a zombie cell, identifying a zombie cell and how that actually causes you to become unhealthy. Because a zombie cell in brief, that's the nickname for it, yeah. a zombie cell says that I'm now dead, so I'm infecting my cells around me in the body. Oh, wow. So I could spend all this time dieting and going to the gym, making no difference because I haven't addressed. So there are things you can do now to remove those sorts of problems. I see. Okay, and other different things as well. Yeah. So it's not just, again, so it's mindset, it's around your environment, it's your physical activities and your health. It all comes together. I love it. And that's a really good point is that, with any of these modalities or any of these philosophies, you can't just address one thing. It's not about addressing one part. Everything oh. is interconnected, and that's why you call yourself holistic coaches. Exactly it's right. It's all about how everything fits in together. Yeah, uh -huh. and that's the important thing. We've got our specialty, but also we're not silly. We know if there's something we can't address as well as we'd like, we'd refer it to somebody. Yeah, of course. Obviously, because we, we don't think we're experts. We think, in fact, the more we learn, the more we know we're not experts. Yep. Mm -hmm. Love we're it. just learning on the journey. Awesome. And, and I want to know a little bit more about the natal versus the manifested genius, because that's like the, talking about nature versus nurture, isn't it? It is, but it's probably more. Would you like to handle that one? Natal is the part that I do. It's based on the individual's year of birth, but the month of birth, the day of birth, the hour of birth, and that can come down to the minute wow. and also the place of 
birth, uh-huh. whether it's in the Northern Hemisphere and the Southern Hemisphere. When I talk to people and they say they've had their feng shui done and they say, oh, they're the year of the horse or whatever. Year of the, year of the whatever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's all based on Northern Hemisphere because that's where actually feng shui came. Feng shui uh-huh. came out of, it was one of the rays of traditional Chinese medicine back thousands and thousands of years ago. Right. And so over the years when in the 1990s, when acupuncture started coming out, people were listening, looking for holistic healing, uh-huh. not just going into medication and all that sort of thing. So over the years, martial arts started coming in and people started saying, looking at a lot of the martial arts, different types of martial arts yep. and then meditation and all that sort of thing. And then now just and recently. Tai Chi and all this stuff. Tai Chi. That all came out of traditional Chinese medicine. And then when feng shui came around in the southern hemisphere, which was created by my tutor who used to teach uh, feng shui masters in the northern hemisphere because everything was written for China. And then the westernized, when the west, they westernized it in the 1990s and it became more of a black sect. So it was westernized feng shui. And it was just about you walk in a room, you have your relationship corner and um, wealth corner. Every room you walked in. Yeah, despite but, its direction, yeah. But what, what my study is on is classical feng shui is using the energy of the earth, the planet, the solar system. So we work on all that. So in, in the northern hemisphere and southern hemisphere, all the magnetic fields, everything opposite. When you look at is our opposite. Yeah. So people born right now in the wintertime in the southern hemisphere, they're saying, okay, they've just had the summer solstice in the northern hemisphere. So if people are born now, their element is totally different. One's fire and one's water. That also will change the dynamics of that person, has a, a difference on all their organ health. There's yin and yang in everything. Every part of our body is yin and yang. The solar system, everything is yin and yang. Everything we talk about is and balancing that yin and yang in in our body. So the individual that is born at that particular moment, at that particular place, has an elemental mix. And that's what I do. We work out the the exact percentage of those elements, those five elements. Beautiful. Those people that will say, oh, well, there's ether and air, and that's actually westernised for like four elements. So we talk about the wood, fire, earth, metal and water. And then from there, I work out a whole, there's a whole lot of calculations. It's really quite deep. And then Jeff comes in and does the manifested, and you can talk about that quickly. Awesome. And I might just jump in. So before we get to the manifested, so people that, that have been exploring feng shui and they might think they're the year of the cat or the year of the rabbit or whatever, but they might not have thought about the fact that they're in the wrong hemisphere. They're exactly the opposite of what they should be. What they think. Exactly. And there, there are, just like we have six months apart mm-hmm. for the year animals, we also have five years difference in the year. Oh, wow. And it's all based on the I Ching back in thousands and thousands of years ago with all the calculations of there's a 60-year cycle, there's actually a 100-year, year, 180-year cycle. So all these cycles of the earth and the planet and that, just like we have a 12-month cycle, each week and day and night there are cycles and everything is calculated. I can foresee, I know, I can work out exactly who you are back in those particular days and then I can foresee what is going to happen in the future because all the cycles just keep coming around, keep coming around. Yeah, okay, interesting. But people don't realise that we also have leap years. We have daylight saving time. We have people, we have the cusp of when, per, per, like I'm born on the 1st of November, so my element is not November. It's the month before. Wow. So it's, people think they get a quick test or whatever it's It's very superficial and it might even be totally incorrect totally opposite i've I've had people say oh my god i said do you really feel like this do you feel like you're a fire person or wood no i said this is who you really are interesting this is what you're born to be interesting so there's a lot of science behind it these guys 
SARS did that. It's, 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 quite, it's quite funny sometimes. SARS is still only just starting to work out that everything that was talked about is actually genuine. Wow. You know? And so then how does that, how does the manifesto genius fit into this? And how much can you actually influence your natal genius? Uh, see, that's a good question. I like that question. <laughs> you answer, that's your cup of tea. Yeah. Oh, do I like tea? <laughs> well, I was going to say, yeah, so Marie talks about elements all the time, which is fine. That's who she is. She likes this stuff. I prefer because I'm a boring male psychologist, which i the old days. I like to look at in terms of human behaviour because these elements are actually states of change or metaphors for human behaviour because what the Chinese said was we looked at nature and the flow of nature. If we grow our crops in the places and the times that match the seasonal changes, we'll have a success. They then realise if we do the same for human behaviour, we'll be in flow and we'll have a good life. Yep. So it works those elements. So I say, okay, that's fine. In terms of behaviour, it's not going to be earth, fire and water and that sort of business. I give them a name because people like names, like a performer or a pioneer or a philanthropist. Uh-huh. Because yeah. be, people like names and titles. And, I, and we both, in both profiles, we talk about the behaviourism as well as the elements because it makes more sense to people. But the thing is, to answer your question, is you're born you know, and your natal genius is determined by the, the, the moment of your first breath, independent breath away from being inside the tummy. Yeah. And that's the first important point, your first embrace of the energy around you. And so you have, you've been endowed with a connection of elemental uh, influences from your, your gene line plus this energy around you. So that's who you are, and that never goes away. Mm-hmm. It never goes away, but it gets hidden because from that point on, and especially the first seven years, there's a massive influence from your parents and then your siblings and then girlfriends, etc. That's right. So you spend the, the rest of your time, right through till the first bit of the time they, they decide to kick the bucket and fall over, trying to be what they unconsciously believe they have to be to fit into the world and be successful. Uh-huh. That's manifested genius. Being the result of learned or impacted influences on your life. And that kind of begs the question, are we doing a good job with modern parenting, or is that another whole topic? Oh, no. don't get me started. <laughs> the answer is no. But I have a lot of backlash from people who I say that I suggest that oh, we've got a program, a manual called Your Child's Personal Story. Yeah. Uh, and it's about the stuff we talk about. Yeah, yeah. But my kid doesn't need that. I, I know my kid. I think back in the day, I was also a teacher, and I know that what the kids are like at school and their friends have nothing like they can be at home. That's right. Yes, there is a difference. Yes, the parents, but the parents can't be at fault. The parents only know what they were taught. So you yes, can't that's true, parents. exactly. Yeah. It's all you about know. what we know. The information. What you know. Yeah. And people often say, we go to work with kids. I don't want to work with the kids. I want to work with the parents and the parents to be. Yep. That's where the bigger big influence comes. Mm-hmm. Because we become so enmeshed, and it becomes unconscious and conscious, we become so enmeshed with who we're trying to be. Mm-hmm. I know someone, for example, uh, I think I have is a good friend of mine now who actually had a whole different career to what he actually started to become. Wow. Yep. 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 I know a few people like that. Yeah. <laughs> so you know, and it happens to a lot of us. You go through life, and, and for example, we see a lot of work in, in, in dental practices, and you'd be surprised the number of dentists, and they're usually Asian, which is a, a cultural thing where parents are very strong on, on what they want for their kids, yep. which is fine. That's their culture. But I heard so many dentists say to me, I never wanted to be a dentist. That was mum's idea or dad's idea. Exactly. I didn't want to be that, but here I am. It's family pressure and family, family pressure. expectations. Yes. Not influence your kids growing up and, and show them the way and give them guidelines Absolutely. and a roadmap. That's fine. So it's about finding the balance. Mm. It's finding the balance. It's giving the people that I would say, if you look at it from a kid's point of view, up to the age of seven, you've got a chance to modify them and help them grow. After seven, they're pretty much set. In a basic way of thinking, right? The passions that come from inside them, the values that come from what they hear and see. Okay. So we already created this environment. What we'd like to do is say, I'm not going to change what you do. I'd like you to think why you do it and how you do it. Mm-hmm. Because that way, when I'm doing something, I'm thinking, so that's why I do that. That's pretty cool. Yeah. And there was a guy as a kid in Sydney many years ago. It wasn't one of my our clients, but he was a 14 year old child who wouldn't come out of his room and was very suicidal just played computer games. He did something not as developed as we do, but a similar sort of a smaller program of it. And when he realised that it was okay to like playing computer games and to okay to think about computers and analysing figures, mm-hmm. he started to feel better about himself and it changed his life. Wow. So I'm not talking about massive changes. Kids will do what they want to do, but don't do what you're told to do. Yes, you've got to, obviously, but don't become the career that the school says you have to do or the parents want you to be. Yeah. If you want to do it and if you need to, how will you do it? Yeah. 
Yeah. How will you approach it so that you feel good about it and you feel that you've got that you've got something to offer and you feel that you can actually have value and be valued? And I suppose the key is helping anyone develop the awareness, the self-awareness mm. to really dive in internally, go on their journey and understand who they are. Because a lot of people yeah. don't want to do that or don't, just don't. Oh, they're scared of it, yeah. Yeah. Well, someone, yeah. matter of fact, just two days ago we talked about this and she said, yes, I know what you mean. She said, I've learned to ignore what's happened around me and, and not, not listen to people and I listen to my, in, my inner voice and I'm happy. And I said, that's fantastic, but your inner voice might be lying. Yeah, that's true too. Yeah. It could be lying because it's lying. Your inner voice is, can be your biggest enemy because it's very keen for you to be successful mm-hmm. and to avoid all these issues. That's an old-fashioned psychology premise for years. You know? How do I avoid the pain, et cetera, et cetera? Mm-hmm. It's not a matter of just your inner voice. It's a matter of knowing, like you said, knowing who you are. Yeah. And that's the fine line between gut instinct in its unique, in its true form, authentic form, and your inner voice, because that inner voice could be clouding that gut instinct. That's right, yeah. And the, when you talk about gut gut instinct, it will all depend on your element, as in what element you are. So I'm a I'm an earth person, so I have. That's all about the gut. Ah, um, so you're stronger. About- you're a good stronger <laughs> gut. No, I haven't actually. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be a good belly dancer, so to speak. Um, but having an earth person is all about the stu- when we look at the organs, it's all about the stomach and the spleen. Yeah. And so, therefore, we, a person who is really high in an earth element could also is also likely to have more gut issues. But yeah. also, we feel it. We feel and have more gut feelings yeah, but, but um, they're, they're authentic in, in this sense yeah, yeah, yeah. someone that is more of a gut person in the yes. natal profile should listen to their gut more because they their gut exactly. is very aware exactly trusted, totally trusted yeah. yeah a fire person it's all about the heart it's also it's about feeling it's all about giving that emotion and all that sort of stuff yeah. a wood yeah. element is the head what, and it's all about having that that thinking of... The right side of your brain, the liver is wood. Liver and gallbladder is the organs, but we also, in terms of, as you're saying, reacting to people like you're mm-hmm. saying here, as I also look at the right side of the brain, the creative side, the imaginative side, yeah. because wood, in its essence, uh, by description, is, is that sense of ascending energy and wanting to grow and develop something and yeah, be imaginative. It's, it can be moulded, it's creative, yeah. it's, it's a material. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the left side of your brain is more analytical. Of course, it's like metal. It's more about finding out why is this, mm. but not because I want to know. Because I want to know so I can help somebody by telling them how it should be. Gotcha. Water is like the corpus callosum, the joint point in your, in your pineal gland, etc., and it goes down the, the 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 marrow of your spine into the kidneys, which is the, the housing of the the water element. Mm-hmm. So that's your ability to be aware of risk. Yep. No, don't do something stupid, but also be insightful, have good feelings, be able to be reflective with people. All these elements have a – that's why the natal genius is so important. It's the same as the home because at the end of the day, your manifested genius is not going to help you in your home, your health, as much as your natal. Yeah. So this is actually it. quite interesting. So if someone does a profile with you and then you say you're this and they say, yep, I've always trusted my instinct in this respect – and you say, yep, you should trust your instinct because you're very high. You rate mm-hmm. very high in that. Or that it might be the exa- exact opposite. They say, you know what, I've always trusted my instinct and I'm always wrong. And then you explain why. Yep. Mm. That's, that's right. They because, can learn a lot by doing that. That's right. And a lot of people have learned to be a certain way because of either their job, because of their parents have forced them to be, you know, or talk or act and do things in a certain way and things like that. As a, When I was growing up, I'd always had that family connection. I always wanted the family connection. Every time we travelled to Sydney and being Italian family, I love being around them. But every time I left, I would get so emotional. And going back to a country town where it was totally different, the emotional and things just change and you wonder why, why am I so emotional? I'm always happy? crying. <laughs> why, why, why am I always that like volatile? Yeah. You know, and, yeah. And when you know your elemental mix yeah. and you think that, that's why I do that. That's why yeah. I get upset when things happen. That's why I can cope with this. This is why I every time Jeff says something, I'm on my phone or something Googling saying yeah. I do the research because that's my metal bit that yeah, I love. Uh, you like I, the details. I, and the, I like those yeah. details, yeah. not a lot. 
And then the opposite, I just said, could work it out, what can we do? That's it. Yeah, Jeff's, <laughs> Jeff's more on the wood side where things are going to be done quickly and he comes up mm. with these ideas and stuff. Mm. So knowing your elements and how strong they are and how weak they are at the particular time of the day. And year. And the month and the day, yeah, the, mm. the cycles. Mm. It will, and also with your health side of things, it just all falls to pieces. And when people, when we sit down and, and do a full consultation with somebody after we've given them their manifested and their natal, yep. they just get them. They're thinking, oh, my gosh, that's why I do this naturally. This is when I'm doing things in, mm. I mean, flow when, when you're driving mm. through somewhere or you're doing some work at home and you're just flying through it and, oh, I love doing this. I get so excited. That's when you're in flow. But when you actually do something, when I'm talking a lot, I can't talk a lot for a long period of time or be in an environment where there's a lot of people, a lot of loud people, because I don't have a lot of fire. But when I get excited, that fire energy comes right. out. But it's knowing, okay, knowing who you are, knowing who you're talking to, knowing how to, okay, if I'm in an environment where they're all lawyers and or accountants and stuff, or yeah. that does my head in. Just back off. So it's the environment. It's not yeah. just to say, it's not just feng shui about placement of furniture. Where, where am I going to put the bed? Which, which Where am I going to put yeah. the picture? Which yeah. way yeah, should I face? The, this way or should I face that way? Yeah, There's much more to this. Yeah, yeah. That, is, that is a very small part of where do you put your bed, where do you put your and chair. And the reason why you do it, not just do it because I said to. Is no, the there's that energy of yeah. that person. It all depends how strong that element is yep. as to how strong or what you need to put into place mm. to actually give you that mm. the clarity about doing things. Because remember, we haven't talked, there's two things we could talk about, but this concept of these and feel tired here, et cetera, these elements, and I can't show you a graphic, obviously, but they work together. They can either support or they can destroy each other. Yeah. For example, fire can destroy metal, can't it? can melt metal, can't it? That's right. Drop in water can put fire out. Yep. So therefore, what are the characteristics of a fire person or a corporate performer? And you think about it, you've got to, on one hand, you've got Marie saying she's in, let's say I'm the one, I'm just, I do this all the time. I go to a place full of people making noise. I try to keep up, I can't keep up. I fall to pieces and I've had it. Yeah. Right? Because I can't control what's happening around me. I have to pull away and have to regroup my thinking and reassess because I know now to do it. But if you didn't, you might go to a party or to a function or to a job where you're feeling stressed all the time because you don't realise the impact of what people are saying and doing around you, what their job is doing to you. Yeah. It can actually have that detrimental effect or it can build you up. And it's like me. I know that I'm, I, before I even did a consultation, I know that I'm an introvert. So I have lots of energy. And when I'm out in a social situation, I give it my 150%. Mm -hmm. I burn out really quick. Exactly. I've got to come right. home and recharge because exactly. I'm obviously, obviously I'm, my element is higher with fire. Mm. Yeah, but remember, fire. Everyone thinks fire. My God, it's going to go on and burn, but fires burn out. That's mm. right. Oh, for <laughs> a long period, yeah, over it's a long both sides of the coin. You've got to look at both yeah. sides. Both sides of the coin. Exactly. And, so, exactly. and then if you tie that into the health, like you've got the emotions of a person, different emotions, positive and, and negative, affect mm. different organs and can create different health problems. Right. Yeah. Now, for example, take the heart. You mentioned fire. That's just heart. Uh, the positive is your joy and happiness. Yep. But that can be detrimental because too much happiness, you can actually end up in a, in a, in a, in a bad state. You can go into anger. Yeah. It's also negative. But every one of them have their, whatever emotion you pick on, grief, sadness, stress, whatever, has an impact on the organ's health. Definitely. And this is good because people can come and learn more about themselves and then know how to manage mm. their makeup better and, That's and, the point, have, yeah. and be better in all those different aspects of life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so we, yeah, so what we do is that we are actually self-healing ourselves mm. and that's what we like to teach people. We give them the, the reports and stuff and we do the consultations, but we also show them how they can self-heal at right. home. Everything can be done at home. We've got lots of consultation work practice, like everyone's got these packages, but basically the concept, yeah, just to mm -hmm. empower, educate. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and help you help yourself, help you yeah. understand yeah. yourself. And yeah. therefore, live more in sync with your natural yeah. being, and your and that's your natal genius in in in, in this. The boy can be in, mm. yeah. And so you don't forget, we haven't mentioned this yet, but 
we also assess the home of a person for this personality because each home has a personality as well. That's true. So we go through and, and determine the house in general, but room by room, the personality of those rooms or house in general. Yeah. Because that's even more useful in trying to make sure that the right thing's happening in those rooms for those people using those rooms. That's right. Because if you decorate your home or structure your home in the wrong way, you might always feel anxious yeah. because it's not in line with who you really are. Mm. As soon as you change the way that things are organised, ah, mm. you feel great. You feel relaxed. Yep. Yep. I, in the last, was about a fortnight ago, I functuated a home. These people were born in the Northern Hemisphere but they're living in the Southern Hemisphere. When they come here and they their bed has to be backing the, the right direction, their office and the whole house dynamics has to be done for the Southern Hemisphere because all the directions are opposite. If they, if they, if they say in the Northern Hemisphere that their bed has to back the, the, the North, down here it has to back the South because... Right. Everything is opposite. Yeah. And when I when we did the consultation, they got it. And I said to the husband and wife, I said, you realise you're opposite each other. You'll have to say one. You'll have to have separate rooms. So. <laughs> Not sure that went down. No, no. But, you know, <laughs> that, that's where I come in and have to work things out because when people are opposite, Jeff and I are the same, what we call it, it's a life group. But when you get couples that are a different life group. Compatible or really, not compatible, really? Yeah. So... It's it's quite interesting and quite fun. Yeah. The couples have a lot of fun, don't they? You know. Oh, we have a lot of fun when it comes to relationships. You know, you know this, don't go to a relationship, coach. Come to us. <laughs> it comes to, yeah. come to you guys. This is even better. I love it. But, yeah, but I just want to be clear. Yeah. I just want to clear up one thing, just so I understand and the audience understands as well. Obviously, your natal genius is what you're born with. It's your your, your genetic yep. make. Your not your genetic, but your natural makeup. And natural, then your yeah. manifested genius is what you've become. Because of society and it's, you might not have had much part in directing that, it's just what you become. But if you have a better awareness, you can direct that in a way that is better and in more in line and in harmony with your natal genius. Is that correct? Maybe you should write that copy for us. That's good. But I think a lot of people <laughs> want to be a particular type of person. They try to be this particular per type of person, so they try to change the way that they are. But, or they try to cope with what's happening. And they try to cope, but that's when people get sick and stressed because right. they're not they're putting it against place. themselves. They're fighting against themselves. Yeah, that's, exactly. That's work. So we had one person so funny. She sat down and she said, "I've got nothing wrong. I've got a great life." And within five minutes, she said, oh, "I don't sleep well at night. Uh. I've got this." I said, and she within a space of a short space of time, she said, "Oh." I do have things I need to work on, don't I? But her first response was, I've got a great life. I'm so healthy. I'm so happy. Everything's perfect. That's right. Everything's about, everything's about awareness and education, really. Yeah. Mm. But remember, people don't want to, because I mean, it's a fair thing. You grow up as a, to be an adult. You'd like to think you've got some value and worth. That's and right. nobody as an adult wants to be told that they've they got it wrong. Yeah. Or they block it. Yeah, yeah. And that's a shame because you can become so much better if you just open up and let it happen. I mean, a good example, let's face it, you know this, I don't know if you might, but if you go and look at us, so male versus female, but I like working with females because they're more prepared to open up quickly and take on board. Yes. Males are harder work till they decide to let go. Definitely. Men are very much more protected and we have a lot more ego mm. and we don't want to, we don't want to be vulnerable. That's just the male trait. No, but when you let go, they're worse than a female. Yeah, when you let go, oh my God, the floodgates <laughs> open. Fuck, it's everywhere. <laughs> um, which is, but in other words, stop trying to be the, the Australian male hero and just be valued to yourself and just let it happen. Right. Yeah, I love it. Yeah. Fantastic. <laughs> now, I want to talk about the genius profile. Have we talked about that or is that different again? That's all we've been talking about. So genius profile is basically living, putting those things in harmony. Is that what it means? Genius profile is a combination of your natal and your manifest and how you choose your life and how you choose to live your life. The funny thing is, if you knew your exact natal genius, that's cool. But the moment you change something in your life to make that work, you've gone to manifest it. That's right. Think about it. The moment you do something consciously, to change it. So you can embrace it. As long as you stay true to it, it's going to be there for you. Mm -hmm. right? So that's very important. And that's where flow comes from. A lot of people in this world, uh, Mr. Kotler is a big name worldwide about flow and all these people, but they always say you can't stay in flow. But there's a better way of doing it. For example, if you try and live your life by how you've learned to live your life, which is manifested, I call that manufactured flow. 
Yeah. Manufacturing how I'm doing and what I'm thinking to get my outcome. Yep. That's why I get stressed and stop. Yep. Or I can live in a complete fairy tale land and be totally uh, my natal self, my genius, and then I would have natural flow because I'm just doing something that works for me. Yeah. Now, neither one of those can last for long because for obvious reasons. I realise a little bit of the whole concept of the genius profile is helping people get to the point of sustainable flow, which means I know how to be in flow naturally, but I know when to do something if I'm swerving off path to stay on path longer to get a bigger outcome and more at the time in flow and being comfortable. Gotcha. So there are times when we have to go against our natural flow sometimes. <laughs> yeah. As long as we realise that and we manage it accordingly, Correct. make sure that we are recharged and we have all the tools exactly. that we need, yeah. come back when we need to, that's fine. Exactly. So therefore, again, there's, there's conscious control. And it's like everything. Like It's a simple basis of the more you know, the more you can employ. Yeah, that's right. The old-fashioned, the image of, the, of a beach full of people with their heads stuck in the sand. And all you can see is their backside sticking up. Yeah, yeah. Uh, up to the Western world. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. When you look up and see a smell the roses and realise there's actually air and there's people and there's activity, yes. it's a whole new world. That's right. Love it. Man, <laughs> this, this sounds fascinating. And I suppose that's what, when you talk to spiritual people, when they say, I meditate on something or whatever, and I attract certain things, I suppose the universe will allow you to attract things when you're in flow because things are just optimized for your life. And, yeah, so change that. You said the universe will allow you when you're in flow. No, you created it by being in flow. There you go. Okay. So you create, by making sure, by putting yourself in flow, you are allowing more opportunities Correct. To, yes. Yes. to be attracted to you because you are in line with who you're meant to be. Yes. Exactly. Uh, when you are in line with your, your elemental mix, hmm. it, it will depend. If, if an opportunity opens, then somebody can come to me and say, look, I, I've, I've got this opportunity. Do I need to, whether it's I need to buy a house and I, do I take that risk or do I let it? And then what I can say, I can look at your charts and say, okay, now is not the right time. Wow. Now is not the right time to do that. To that person. L yeah. Now is not the right time to fly. Because you know when some work, sometimes when you go somewhere and, oh, my gosh, all of a sudden everything goes wrong for you. Mm hmm you know, you have, oh, this breaks down, this breaks. That's not the right time. In other words, the energy is not matching. The energy is yep. not matching. Yep. But having that energy match when you want to make a, a big decision or ask somebody to marry you or buy a house or, or whatever, whether it's a relationship thing or a wealth thing or anything like that, it's got to be the right time. Perfect. And those people like myself, we feel, okay, now's the right time. Even like a couple of weeks ago, Jeff's yeah. been saying to me, you've got to lose weight, you've got to get fit, you've got to go back to ballroom dancing. And like, it wasn't the right time. We're having a cup of coffee just a couple of weeks ago, actually about three weeks ago. It was the right time for me, said, Jeff, I'm going back to ballroom dance training. I was gobsmacked. And Jeff was gobsmacked because it felt it had to be the right time for me to do it. Exactly. Not him or anyone saying, you need to do this, you need to do this. You've got to feel it. You've got to say, oh, okay, I'm ready now. And that was that whatever you call it, you just know. I can tell you what it is. Go on, Jeff. Please. Tell us what it is. <laughs> oh, well, I, I like this little, this little analogy. I think it's a good one. You want to you wanna get from where you are in a town. Yep. Okay? And then you're going to catch a train. So you go to the train station. Okay, the train is going to come and stop and leave, regardless of if you're there or not. At a particular time, it will have its time, mm -hmm. and and that train is one of many trains in the system, the bigger picture, doing their thing, mashing together. Yep. Now, if you are not there at time, you won't get on. So you've missed your opportunity. You're not in flow. So you've got to be there to get on that train at the right time, to get where you need to be, to get off at the right time in the right place. Therefore, by, yeah. by being in flow, you will recognize yeah. those opportunities in front of you and know what to do about them because you are in flow. Correct. But, but energy is it's like the same the universe will give me if I ask it. No, it doesn't. Not as energy doesn't give a yeah. what's the name if you're here or not. Energy is going to do its thing. The train's going to come and go whether you're there or not. It doesn't care. Mm -hmm. It's your job to fit in with that. Yeah. It might not be, it might be better that you miss the train because maybe it wasn't the right time. Exactly. Exactly right. Exactly. So then you're fitting in yeah. with the energy, not the other way around, right? And, and when I used to catch the train and I used to work in, in, in the city, you catch the train would break down. Okay, do I walk, do I get off 
and walk a couple of kilometres to work or do I stay on the train and wait for it to be fixed or the power to come back on? Which path do I take? Exactly. It's like sliding doors, that movie. Okay. No, I don't want to be walking a couple of hours to go to work. <laughs> so I just stay and wait. So depending on what path you take, mm-hmm. When something, something, an obstacle is thrown at you, it's really fate too. I think it's okay. Whichever way, you, you're going to make it yours and that's and, and accept it. And accept that's it. That's right. And, and that, my next question was going to be what happens if you have a choice and those two, the two things that you're choosing between are very different, but you really want one, but you, I might come to you and you might say, that's actually not the best one for you right now. Is there a way that, you can, that I can say, you know what, I'm still going to do that, but with your guidance, how can I do it in a better way? Mm. Is, there, yes. is that a possibility yes. or is yes. it just not? It's because it's a matter of what you might call it a remedy mm. or an enhancement. Same for a home, it's same for a person. Mm. It's okay. It, um, you need to, again, it comes to the fact you're matching energy. So you need to do this at that point in time because that's what will work with that energy. Get back to that I said about constructive, destructive cycles, how one can hurt the other. So if that energy is going to hurt you, what would you do differently to make sure that it doesn't hurt you the wrong way? Mm. So you can do it in a in a in a way that you're more balanced and in, and protected. more balanced, yeah, yeah. yeah, more aware, yeah. Mm. Okay, interesting. Yeah, mm. I see. That's that's topic in itself, isn't it? That's yeah, a topic, indeed. Isn't it? And and the longevity formula is that basically just living along the lines of being in flow with all those seven different elements. It's the seven factors right in the middle. I call it the seven factor blueprint. It's right in the middle of the process. You have your genius profile on one side. You have the concept of, of intentional longevity on the other. To get from there to there is to address the seven factors of longevity. Yep. They're affected by internal and external impacts on your life. So yep. it's, it's an ongoing battle. It's not, oh, I've got it right now. No, of course but it's, it's, that always changing. it's always changing. But that's the concept of going from manufactured through into sustainable flow because when you know them, when you're employing them, when you've got a, a grasp of them, no one's going to get it right at the time. We're only human. No, of course not. You're not going to get it right, but it's, it's the conscious effort and the awareness that does it for you. So... The longevity formula simply says, you've got this, I'm not going to say God-given because that's the wrong word to use, but this, as the term goes, this God-given set of characteristics, a suite of characteristics, good, bad, and different. And you're living in this world. So you've got to get from point A to point B. It's like going in an obstacle course. I've got to get from the start to the finish, and I've got to avoid all these things in the middle, but yeah. pick the parts that will help me. So it's the same thing. And, I've got to, and, and I need to know this, because if I don't know this, I'm going to get slammed by something. That's right. Or I can get a bonus and move forward extra steps and get away from something. Yeah. So- so it's an awareness. It's a learning and awareness and application type of thing. Yeah, and it's a constant journey of reflection and correction. Absolutely. Mm, mm, absolutely. Mm. And that's part of the game of life, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Game of life. The it. Chinese had that. Chinese actually with hopscotch. A thousand years ago, they had their version of hopscotch was quite, I can't remember the exact detail, it's off my head, but their idea was that the squares were was life and things happening in life. And so the idea was you had to get through those squares to get to heaven which was the finish of the game uh-huh. if you start on a line it means that you've just had a whoopsie and you've done something silly and it's hurt you and that was how they played hopscotch that was their way of hopscotch okay amazing it's a price to life now isn't it yep. if you get us other lines you win yep yeah if you don't you lose <laughs> go back and start trying in and where does meditation fit into this Ah, well, Med- so, meditation oh. is no, but you can talk about it. <laughs> but meditation is one of the eight rays of the traditional Chinese medicine. I'm, I'm not one of these really these spiritual type of people that will just go into this. Like the, the whole world has changed with them. Yeah. You've seen them. They get, I love them. They get their legs crossed in the most unhumanly way. They, they put their fingers in a certain fashion, which is yeah. weird. <laughs> And and see, me being an earth person, it has to be the right time for me to be able to zone out. And when we did that, when Jeff did training many, many years ago, I went out to it. I just... I lost it. We were in in, in Brisbane at where that place was, and we had to go into this chill out sort of thing <laughs> and I went out to it I was in a I was in some other zone but actually that also happens to me when I'm doing competition ballroom dancing back in the day when I was in Sydney and up here people used to say to me oh you look so elegant so beautiful what do you do and I say oh, I don't know because you're in a zone and you are totally entrenched in who you are. I haven't got to worry about, I've got to do these footsteps. I haven't got to do these. I was in natural flow. So when you are in natural flow, you just do things that you haven't got to think about. Yep. 
And people say, That's because they come you naturally to you. It's the word yeah, natural. Yeah. Mm. And it, it's mm. and the, all those people that are listening, hundreds and hundreds and thousands of people who are listening to this podcast, I'm sure. Millions, that, millions of people. Millions, millions. Sorry, <laughs> millions of people. <laughs> I'm sure that everyone can come up with a point points in their life or little or you activities, know, activities or and stuff scenarios, where they've yeah. done stuff and they think, oh, my God, what, are, what did I just do that? That's what we call in flow. That's Perfect you flow. doing mm. something naturally. Mm. And that's yeah. when you could talk about artists in that exactly. state. That's exactly. That's when they make their most creative work. When they're in flow, Yes, a song will come to them or a painting or a this exactly. or a sculpture or and when yeah. you're not, you have block or you have writer's block. You just cannot get in flow. Yeah. Exactly. Well, when I was performing at the stage, it's like it's a really loud stage. And you'd think, it's, oh, my fingers won't work, I'm too nervous. But you know what? The same thing as you're saying right there, because mm-hmm. when it's happening, you're more intent on watching what's happening in front of you and enjoying You don't think for a second what I'm mechanically mm-hmm. doing. Yep. Same exactly. principle, isn't it? Yep, absolutely. Yep. But here's the thing. I've got to, I'll make this point because I like this one. I discovered this a while ago. It seems obvious. It's not concept of meditation. And a lot of experts overseas, people say meditate, you empty your mind. Some of the big experts in meditation say no. If your mind wants to talk, let it talk. Mm-hmm. Right? Yes. And then they've been thinking, and I discovered, I didn't make this up, which I hadn't, so there's this concept of mindlessness. So okay. instead of meditating, right. you get self comfy and you just become mindless. And so whatever happens in your head happens. It doesn't matter what it is. You're not doing anything physical, you're just letting it go. Just let it be. And I did science research in America on this, and the reaction at the beginning was people didn't want to do it because they felt that they were not being productive. Mm-hmm. What the results showed was by having a session on mindlessness, they became more productive afterwards. Yeah, because they were just emptying and letting things go. Yeah, and letting things just be what they are. Yeah. They were just, in a sense, they were regrounding themselves. Yeah, exactly. I love that. Very cool. Yeah, it's a great little thing to do. I, I do it every day. <laughs> I used to find, I, I think it's the same sort of thing. When I used to work in the government, I would be working so hard that at Christmas time we'd close down the office for two weeks and I would be pushing, pushing. And back in the day I didn't realise that my health was getting really, I was getting really sick. I had the shingles. I, had, I, got, I was bullied quite a bit. So I got the shingles, then I got adrenal fatigue. Um, I, I was getting really sick. Mm-hmm. Every time I took a break, like for two weeks off, I would get really sick because you're not in that environment, whereas every day you've got to go back to the same things, same people, bullying and all that sort of stuff. So your body gets sick mentally, you you know, you have a lot of mental and emotional issues going on there. Physically, people don't realise that the physical health is just so important. And that's why the three treasures, the environment, your physical and mental, and your emotional and mental health. <laughs> yeah, those three treasures. Lifestyle. So, yeah. But every time I'd go away from that environment and I start to relax, my body was mm-hmm. saying, I, and then I would get really sick because I, I'm worrying about going back to work and all the sort of things. I've got to drink a glass of wine and it made a difference. I have a glass of wine. Yeah, that works for me too. <laughs> I have a crystal day with a glass of wine. <laughs> works for me. wine fixes everything. <laughs> Guys, that's been, that's been amazing, like really fascinating. I think we'll have to get you back again to maybe tackle another topic and maybe we'll tackle those seven elements because that, that might be fun. Yeah, yeah. Like, I'm happy. You know, we, we would chat all day, mate. We have yeah, fun. Absolutely. Yeah. This is, this is great. <laughs> But why don't you tell the audience a little bit more about how they can work with you and what can they expect when they work with you? What, how does it all work? There's a million different ways, but at the moment we're focusing on this a program right now as a starting point, which is bespoke home and lifestyle design. Hmm. So it encompasses everything we've talked about today, basically, but it allows them to start with their profile and then we design what they need to know or do for themselves. So we create this you know, bespoke work program. So it becomes a bespoke coaching, consulting arrangement they can have. It can go through a month, two months, three months, whatever it is that suits their needs. So that's our that's our, uh, our fun part to be because that means we're really working with people in a good way. Yeah. If they don't want... That's like the, working as a coach because you're always with them. You're always well, there coach, to help coach, them along yeah. the way if they need. Yeah, a coach, accountability partner, a mentor. Yep. It really is hands-on. It, and nothing is done, like someone asked the other day, like you do digital type of thoughts. No, everything we do is by hand. Because it's designed one by one, there's no two things the same. No way, you can't. If that's, too, if that's too much for people to follow on, then of course, we also love doing group workshops and masterclasses where they come in groups. And we have a board doing that. We just have the best time mm-hmm. because people get they get involved, they talk, and that's, or if they're a private person who doesn't want to, that sort of things, we have a number of self uh, downloadable self help 
programs they can do. That's right. That's they try to cover all the aspects, but then they have to work with us. I suppose the easy thing is just to have a chat first because then we – First thing we do is work out exactly where they're at, what they need to do, what they're trying to achieve. Because the funny thing is, we don't have to tell someone, I don't have to tell you if I went through this process, what you need to do. You don't tell me, you work it out for yourself. Yes. You'll come with an issue and you'll quickly discover all those things around that issue that are helping the issue be what it is. So that's the, that's the nuts and bolts of all our programs. Start the process, unfold in front of you what you really need to do, and let's get it done. Love it. Love it. Mm. Very cool. And best way to find you? You're at home. But <laughs> <laughs> well, at the moment, I said. <laughs> send a carrier pigeon. Yeah, send a carrier pigeon. Maybe outside. Yeah, we're, we're, we're good at technology. Yeah, we're really good at that. Um, obviously, yeah, email, emails are good. Um, email, website. Website's good, although the website needs updating, but everyone always needs updating. Emails are the best. Emails are good. Facebook, we've got a lot of presence Facebook to LinkedIn. Okay, great. And there's lots of ways I can find it. We're easy found. If you put in the word Night Pillar, Lifestyle Night Pillar Folks Play, we will we'll pop up all over the place. I'm yeah. not sure if it's a good thing on it. But... <laughs> <laughs> well, well done. Marie and Jeff, I really appreciate you coming on the show. That was a fascinating conversation. Oh, thank I've you. learned a lot. I always like to give my guests the last word. Anything that you guys want to leave the audience with? I like or something. Go on, go on. No, go, you go, you go. I might get it wrong. You would like to have the last word. Yeah. <laughs> I would like, it's not my original statement, but I think it's a very important one. And that is for people to understand that their true wealth is what you have when all your assets are taken away from you. Oh, I like that. Now think about it. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. So that's very my cool. takeaway for people. Think about that one. Beautiful. Very true. And Marie, anything you wanted to add? Uh, I just love helping people and helping them get onto a pathway that is really suited to them and they don't realise it. Yeah, and it's, as I said earlier, it's just about, you know, starting from the home, starting from the natal and going there. And, and you'd be surprised how people can change oh, I'm sure. um, just after one consultation. Their, their life can change. Their yeah. thinking will change, you know. Um, and, and because a lot of the time, like I read a lot of stuff, and a lot of times when you deal with a lot of this mindset work, the first step of all these different regimens is awareness. Exactly. But as soon as you've been made aware of something, you already start to change because you're aware of it. So that's why the people are changing after one consultation. <laughs> well done, guys. Thanks again for coming on. That was really great. I really enjoyed that, and I'm sure the audience will too. If anybody wants to get in touch with Marie and Jeff, do their charts. I did. They did my charts, and they were fantastic. I learned a lot. So definitely worth chatting to them, and they can help you in many different areas. So uh, check them out. All the details are going to be in the show notes. And I uh, just wanted to say thanks for listening and we'll see you very soon for another episode of Playing With Perspective, the Suspended Animation Podcast. Bye for now. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thanks again for joining me for another episode of Playing With Perspective, the Suspended Animation Podcast. If you would like to join me as a guest on the show, I would be delighted to collaborate feel free to buzz me on 0414 659 800 or email me on darren at suspendedanimation.com.au. I'm always on the lookout for great guests who can share their stories and expertise with my community. Also, if you have been thinking about putting your own podcast together and not sure where to begin, look no further. I run a really simple three-part podcasting course, one-on-one -on -one with me, where I walk you through the entire podcasting journey. You will end up with a fantastic new podcast to start sharing right away. Feel free to get in touch to discuss further. But for now, though, have a fantastic day and I'll see you next time.